So this is a good time to talk about symmetry and when to use it and when not to use it. We're rotating about the surface of the asteroid, rotated about. Does it matter which axis I rotate about? I'll get the same exact uh, whatever you would call this shape this would revolve into. So kind of like a weird. Diamond. What's that? Diamond. I thought you call it a diamond yesterday. Well, well, when we rotate this, it's going to turn into kind of like a top, almost, like a spinning top. I don't know what else really looks quite like that. Uh, so we're going to rotate. Let's just rotate about the y-axis, because it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, Christmas decorate. Well, kind of. I rotate about the y-axis. All right, let's think about symmetry. Could I just take that first quadrant, rotate, I'll go with blue. So could I just take this portion of the curve, rotate, and then carefully double or quadruple it? So would I double this or quadruple? So this would give me a top half, and then I would just get the bottom half. So I'd be doubling this right here. So we could double the blue curve. Double the surface area of blue curve. I think this is how we ended up with the perimeter. At the very end, we used some symmetry so we could avoid the absolute value. So <clears throat> it was treated in a very similar way to this. The only difference is this quarter perimeter will rotate into a half surface area. So we're only taking a quarter of the perimeter, but it's going to turn into half of the surface area. So we had t equals 0 to t equals pi over 2. So those are our t values. Without reinventing everything, let's just go to the previous example. And let's see the best thing to pick off of this. So we did a bunch of work. The thing I'm going to pick out of this previous one is what I just put the box around, which will correspond to, so that is square root dy dt squared plus d, uh, x dt squared dt. So the part I just put a box around, which disappeared, is this part right here. We did a whole lot of work. Well, it was only a few algebra steps, but I skipped a few. And we got this down to what's in the blue box down below. Right? So we turned all that stuff into the blue box down below, which is 3 cos t sine t dt. So we did all this work yesterday. I don't want to redo it. It's exactly the same steps I don't want to redo today. All right, so we're going to take that right there. So I'm going to write the surface area formula. Integral a to b to pi. <clears throat> Which one of these two would I use now? There's two choices for surface area. It depends on how you rotate. Yeah, 2 pi x. So our second one is rotate about the y-axis. And the first one was rotate about the x-axis. So we're doing number two. That did sound good, but we're doing the second one. So we are going to use 2 pi x, not 2 pi y.
All right, so any questions about this formula? Pretty much just pick the right one. All right, we did all that simplification before, so I could avoid the heavy lifting of simplifying that stuff right there. So I think we turn that into three absolute value cos t sine t dt. Is that right? One of you wrote that down. Cos t plus sine t. Ah, big difference. <laughs> cos t plus sine t. All right. And now we have 2 pi. We'll bring that to the front integral. x, we have to be careful. What x do we use for this? Didn't even write the equation here. Somewhere I wrote the definition of the asteroid. Here we go. X is cos cubed t. So that's the x that we're going to uh, plug in here. So we're basically using all the parameterized versions, which should all be functions of t, not functions of x or y anymore. So we got cos cubed t out front. And we said we're going to be doubling our surface area if we go from 0 to pi over 2. So we're doubling our surface area, just doing the upper half. So this 2 out front is the doubling. We're using symmetry. So we have to be careful with the absolute value, but for the same reason uh, before we go 0 to pi over 2, so we don't have to worry about uh, cosine and sine are both positive, so their sum will be positive. So I don't have to worry about the absolute value now. So this is always positive when t is between 0 and pi over 2. So our service area will now be 4 times 3 is 12. 12 pi, 0, pi over 2. So we just have cos cubed t. The absolute value just turns into multiplication now. So I think from here, this would be a calc 2 problem, a calc 2 integral to do. Not easy, but not difficult. If you were going to solve it, what would be the a smart first step to take here? So we could do that. I think all the, so the, is that 8, 2, all those trig examples, none of them had addition inside of them, really. So what I'm going to do, distribute, and then basically we have two separate integrals, neither of which have separately addition inside of them. So we got cos to the fourth t plus cos cubed sine. The odd ones are always easy because you can do that exact trick, which is turn uh, one of the cos squareds into 1 minus sine squared, and then you have a u sub. The, odd, the even ones, those are less easy. You have to go half angle or power reduction formula, which turns it into, I think it turns into a double angle. And I think you have to actually apply it twice, which is very not. I did that one time, which was one more time than I wanted to do it. But you needed to see it written out last quarter. Took, I think, uh, quite a few steps. So this is a calc 2, 8.2 integral. So I can just write dot, 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 but you do need to know how to do this. Wait, what's it cosine plus sine yesterday? I thought it was just multiplied. Oh, no. What was it? Oh, no, it is multiplication. All right, so <laughs> that changes things a little bit. Details. All right, so that's multiply, multiply. So that changes quite a bit. I actually 
actually I think this makes it a whole lot easier. So we got coast to the fourth. Now it's an easy 8.2 integral. So you would turn your cos to the fourth into cos squared squared, and then one minus sine squared squared, and a u sub. So u equals sine, uh-oh, right? Oh no, u equals cos. No, this one's even easier. u equals cos, so you got u to the fourth du, basically. This would be, I think, one of the first two cases where you got an odd trig function. So next section, hopefully you remember polar coordinates. Oh yeah. A little bit. So we'll just we just have time to draw out what polar coordinates look like. Let me go into some graph paper. So Cartesian coordinates, this point is x, y. However, in polar coordinates, we measure in a different way. We have an r and a theta. And when we write them out, we generally write the r coordinate first, the theta coordinate second when we write in polars. And if you ever confuse that, just remember r comes before t in the alphabet, just like x comes before y. So. They're alphabetically ordered. All right, how do I relate x to r and theta? Uh, right triangle. Yeah. So right triangle trig. So what is cosine theta? X over r. X over r. Whoa, what did I do wrong? Oh, you flipped x and y? Yeah, flipped x and y. So that's y. That's x. Now, does that look better? Cos x over r, sine y over r. And the other one that we use is tangent is y over x. Uh, we try to get the th uh, polars on one side, Cartesians on the other. So I'm going to rewrite the first one as x equals r cos theta, the second equation, y equals r sine theta, and the last one, y over x equals tan theta. So those should not be uh, new for you. Hopefully that rings a bell or turns on a light bulb somewhere in the back of your mind. So we're going to be using these, and of course, very soon we'll be doing uh, calculus on these. So we'll be taking derivatives and all that fun stuff. So I'll leave you here.